Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to be learning how to draw the drip effect and we're going to be using Squirtle. Before we get started on the actual drawing, I want to go over how we actually do the drip effect. When you draw the drips, make sure that they have a big long swoop to them. Make sure the contours are very rounded. You don't want to have similar little drips of all even size. You want to actually change the sizes as you go along the structure. Some big and some small. Now for the melted side, it's very similar to a drip, except this is going to have a very wavy texture to it. Each line is going to be slightly beveled with some drip, but not big drips like in the previous side. We want to make sure that it almost looks like a haze effect to it. Now we can take what we were discussing in the first part and apply it here. Once again, we want to change the size and sometimes the direction of the drips. Don't make them all uniform and try to see as if it were water flowing off of the creature. Ironically, it's Squirtle. But think of the shapes that they are. Are they more rounded? Are they more blocky? If it's a more rounded object, then it might have a longer taper. If it's a more blocky, then it might have a very sharp or very long, narrow drip. And this is a, just a good way to have fun and play around with the different textures and styles. Just remember the one fundamental aspect about all art, his art must be fun. I say it in all my videos, but it's a must. It is my number one teaching point for any student. Art must be fun. So even if it does look a little wacky or silly or whatever, it doesn't matter. Now on to our third part is the melted. Once again, we want to make sure everything is a little bit more rounded. A lot of swirls, not a lot of drips. The drips that we do have, we want them to be very small. We want it to look like the creature is melting away into a pile of goo. And if done correctly, it can have an amazingly cool effect. And it's something that's very, very simple, but can take a long time to master. But once again, have fun with it. It doesn't matter how great it comes out. If you're practicing and you're having fun, that should be all that matters. For the third part, before we get into coloring, it's the outlining. And this is where you can really make or break a drip drawing. If you don't take your time and really make sure the lines look crisp, it can look like a mess. It's something that sometimes a lot of us can overlook. We just want to quickly scratch away, get to the next step, get to coloring. But every aspect of art needs to be taken with the same level of precision. Just because the outline may not look good, it takes a lot longer than to try to clean it up with coloring, etc. So take your time, have a little bit of patience, and you'll find that you'll have a perfect outline in no time. And one little higher end tip for you, if you will, when you are inking at the bottom of your drips, you can take a brush marker and add a little bit of depth at the bottom of the swooshes of the drips, and you'll find it'll give it that extra level of three-dimensionality but we'll talk about that also when we go into coloring, how we make it look like a three-dimensional drip. Now we're on to what my favorite part of any video is, and that's the coloring, where we can really make a character look three-dimensional, have all the fun of making the character come to life. And a good rule of thumb for a beginner is to start with your lightest colors first and then gradually work your way down. Make sure you test these out on a side sheet of paper and have your colors ready so this way you're not forgetting your colors or not forgetting which order they are and you have to bounce back and forth and retest a million times. It's something that I still do a lot to this day. But it is going to save you some time. If you go with your lightest colors first, you will also find that in case you screw up, you won't have that problem of running out of light space. But if you start too dark, you can't go back. There are some tips and tricks for more advanced artists, but this is more of a beginner's tutorial, and I really want you to understand that it's a lot easier to start off light than it is to go with dark first. Another beginner tip that I want to stress is that for a lot of animated characters and cartoon-based characters, which Squirtle obviously is, he is an anime, you want to use a cellular shading or where we use blocks of shading. 
Do not try to do too much three-dimensional shading with blending unless you're very comfortable with that. And if you're on to that next stage or an intermediate or even an advanced art, then go right ahead. But if you're new and you just want to get the effect down, it's easier to do the cellular shading. This way you won't feel too stressed by the challenge of having to do it. Before I go into the last little bit of coloring, I want to thank you all so much for everything you've done for my channel recently. It's been amazing, the growth that I've actually achieved. And it's because of of you. You guys have shown the clicks, the likes, the comments, etc. I read them all. I really try to comment on everybody. It is a work of love. I work a 50-hour job on top of coming home and doing artwork for everyone about four to five hours a night. And I really, really do love and read all the comments that you guys say. I can't stress that enough. So thank you all. Now that I got all that silly sappiness out of the way, let's finish up with the coloring. Now that the creature has a three-dimensional shape to it, we're going to add these little subtleties. So what we'll do is add a little bit of a shadow underneath the drip itself. And you can do this with uh, the slightly darker shades. And just go over it a couple of times if it's an alcohol marker. And just that alone will give the three-dimensional depth. Or you can use a color pencil and just lightly add a slightly darker value shade. Either way, it'll give it that nice, beautiful three-dimensional shape. And then finally, with the last little finishing touches, we can take either a white color pencil, a gel marker, or a white Posca pen, and just dab in the little highlights at the very front of the drip. And that will give it a beautiful little three-dimensional flair. And we're just about finished. What do you guys think? Do you want more tutorial-based stuff? Do you want more maybe anime or Marvel or realism? I know you guys seem to really love my realistic work. So let me know what you think in the comments below. And I will see you guys all in the next video.